Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is types of antenna. In the earlier video, we have discussed the radiation mechanism of an antenna. We have also discussed what is an antenna. It is basically uh, the means to transfer electromagnetic waves. So simply there are two types of antennas, transmitting antenna, which is at the transmitter side and another is receiving antenna. Naturally, it is at the receiver side. Now, this chart shows the different types of antennas. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What are the different types of antennas and explain any one or any two types of antennas. So as I said, this chart shows different types of antennas. So different types are wire antenna, then aperture antenna, microstrip antenna, reflector antenna, antenna arrays and lens antenna. In case of wire antenna, as the name indicates, this is the simplest type of antenna. This antenna is designed by making use of a single wire. In the last video, I have explained you how the radiation is uh, can be generated from a single wire or uh, you can well make use of a two wires to generate the radiation. So there are again uh, subtypes of this wire antenna. First is linear wire antenna, then loop antenna and helical antenna. So this diagram shows the linear wire antenna. It is also called dipole or a simple dipole. We have discussed dipole means di means two. So there are two poles. So uh, this is used to radiate the signals. I mean, it is used to generate the radiation that we have already discussed in the last video. So these are the linear wires. This particular part, this represents linear wire. So the two linear wires are shown in this diagram, which is called a dipole. And they are connected to TL. TL stands for transmission line. So the signal travels through the transmission line and it is applied to linear wire antenna and the principle or phenomena what we discussed in earlier videos. Uh, due to that phenomena, radiation takes place. So this is the function of linear wire antenna, which is also called a dipole antenna. Next is loop antenna. As far as this loop antenna is concerned, do remember we are talking about single wire antenna. But the ek wire use karke antenna tayar karna hai. So single wire is used and which is in the form of a square loop or a single wire is used and which is, which is in the form of a circle. So there are two types again square loop antenna and circular loop antenna. As I said, again, these antennas are uh, manufactured uh, by using, designed by using a single wire. Next is helical antenna. Single wire is used and it is placed in the form of helical loop. So this helical loop due to sudden uh, changes in the structure produces the radiation. This is the helical type of antenna. So these are the subtypes of single wire antenna. Next an important type of antenna that is aperture antennas. It is also called horn antenna. Now it is related to the structure which is called a waveguide. So as the name indicates waveguide is the structure which guides the signals which guides the waves propagating through it. There are two types of waveguides. One is rectangular waveguide. The same pilot diagram, a diagram, major reading seven. I that is a rectangular waveguide. So I am just drawing the structure separately for the simplicity purpose. This is the rectangular waveguide. Another type is circular waveguide, which is shown in this diagram. So it is like a cylinder, like this. So this is the circular waveguide. Now, if you are talking about any waveguide, so if you apply input. A signal from one end and we want the radiation from this end so we want radiation from this end this is possible if you are using a single waveguide or simple waveguide because what we have learned in earlier sessions whenever there is a discontinuity then uh, acceleration or deacceleration of moving electrons i mean change in the velocity of moving electron takes place and because of which radiation is produced in this, in this case, same thing is happening. But the problem with this structure is there is an abrupt change over here at this end. There is an abrupt change or abrupt discontinuity because of which radiation takes place. But majority of the amount is reflected back to the source, back to the transmitter. This is one drawback. Second drawback is these are the edges 
I mean this part, this part indicates edges of this open end. Suppose this, this is the open end. So at the edges, whenever the signal uh, reaches uh, at the edges, then diffraction may take place. So these two things basically affects the performance of antenna. That means it will reduce the directivity of antenna at, as well as it will reduce down the gain of an antenna. To avoid this, why it is happening? Because there is a sudden change. To avoid this, one concept is used that is called as tapering. Tapering or flaring. What is this? See, there is a sudden change. If you want a smooth change, then certain type of structure is connected. In, this is the open end. At the open end, we are not allowing sudden discontinuity, but one type of structure is created. So it shows a smooth variation. This is called the tapering of the structure. And this type of antenna, since it looks like a horn, it is called horn antenna. Now, this portion, which I have drawn with the black ink, this portion is called as called as horn if this horn is in the direction of electric field that means there are two types again electric field and magnetic field e and h if this horn structure is in the direction of electric field it is called e plane horn same logic we want to flare down the structure we want to provide the tapering to avoid the sudden discontinuities so again this type of structure which is shown by the blue ink is uh, connected at the open end of this waveguide this is this red, uh, red color diagram indicates a rectangular waveguide so if this horn this is again horn if this horn is in the direction of uh, magnetic field then it is called h plane horn structure Next, if the horn is in both directions, in the direction of electric as well as magnetic field, it is called pyramidal horn. Next is the conical horn. It is related to cylindrical waveguide. So this is the cylindrical waveguide. Again, the same logic, uh, simple cylindrical waveguide is like this. There is a sudden open end. Again, we have discussed the drawbacks if there is a sudden discontinuity. To avoid this, this type of structure, I mean this type of horn is connected at the output. So it is the conical horn. So these are the different types of aperture or horn antennas. Next type of antenna, microstrip antenna. This is the diagram which shows the construction of microstrip antenna. It basically consists of important parts like this lower part is a ground plane. Then this setting portion indicates dielectric substrate and this circular part denotes radiating patch. So three important parts are there, ground plane, di dielectric substrate and radiating patch. This radiating patch can be having any type of uh, uh, structure like circle, like ellipse, uh, and so on like equilateral triangle. So this is the radiating patch. Actually this radiating patch is developed by performing etching on the uh, printed circuit board. So by performing etching we can develop this radiating patch and as the name indicates this is the radiating patch. So radiation comes out from this structure. So this is the structure, uh, structural details of microstrip antenna. It has number of advantages like lightweight, low volume then it has a planar configuration and most important part is it is compatible with integrated circuits so due to this all these advantages its applications includes they are used in uh, as an antennas in case of high speed vehicles or in missile systems next is reflector antenna as the name indicates it works on the principle of reflection so there are two types one is corner reflector and another is uh, parabolic reflector. Uh, this parabolic reflector is also called as microwave dish. Now, this is the general structure of corner reflector antenna. As shown in this diagram, this distance is lambda by 2. The basic principle is, we know that we want to operate, uh, let us say, these antennas in terms of, in case of microwave frequencies. So, we have the basic formula lambda that is wavelength is c by f c is the speed of light f is operating frequency at micro frequencies means we want to operate this antenna as at much larger frequency so as the frequency increases this 
lambda that is wavelength goes on decreasing now if we are using lambda by 20 now then its physical dimensions gets reduced so reflective type of antennas are most suitable as far as the dimensions are concerned so you can make use of these antennas uh, at the micro frequencies so this is the structure of corner reflector as shown in this diagram this is plate 1 this is plate 2 so two plates are formed in such a way that you are getting some kind of corner which is acting as a reflecting surface this is the angle theta and this distance is lambda by 2 as shown in this diagram this is the transmission line tl stands for transmission line which is applying which is used to feed the antenna i mean to apply the input signal to an antenna second type is parabolic reflector antenna or microwave dish if you have a parabola and if you rotate the parabola around uh, about its axis then parabolic reflector antenna structure is generated next important part is antenna arrays in many applications single antenna is not sufficient in such cases to improve the gain to improve the directivity especially number of antennas are used they are connected in the form of stack again there are different designing principles and all that so basically a bunch of antenna is used in certain applications to improve the directivity and gain this is called antenna array a common example is yagi uda antenna this type of antenna consists of number of directors as shown in this diagram you can say number of things number of directors are connected are stacked together so improved directivity and improved gain is obtained this is the basic principle of yagi uda antenna this antenna is especially used in fringe areas that means the areas fringe areas means what the areas where the signals are very weak in such cases due to use of multiple antennas multiple antenna structure this type of antenna array gives us the large gain as well as large directivity this type of this aguda antennas are used in ultra high frequency and very high frequency uh, very high frequency range for the reception of television signals the last type of antennas is lens antenna it is similar to the lenses used in case of optics we know that uh, the lens is used to collimate all the light rays and then allow uh, the light rays to travel in a particular direction. So on the same principle such antennas works. So these antennas are used to collimate incident energy and prevent, prevent it from spreading in the undesired directions. These antennas are especially used at HF that is higher frequencies they are not suitable for lower frequencies because at lower frequencies we have discussed the relation lambda is c by f so if c is the speed of light which is fixed f is the operating frequency if frequency is low then uh, lambda wavelength increases and dimensions of antenna depends on the wavelength so such types of antennas are used at high frequencies then we know the basic uh, types of lens concave lens convex lens and so on same principles are used as far as these lens antennas are concerned so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video